Good evening and welcome to Newsbreak Live. I'm Hiba Samad. It's Tuesday, November 26. Thanks so much for joining. Here are your top stories. Weather experts say a cold storm could hit the Southern California region as soon as tomorrow early morning. So if you have travel plans to hit the road for Thanksgiving, make sure you are prepared for the wet weather and possible travel delays. According to the National Weather Service, the storm may bring thunderstorms. So if you feel your property needs sandbags, you can stop by the City of Torrance City Yard to pick up free ones. It's recommended to call ahead to see if a crew is available and make sure to bring an ID to show proof you are a Torrance resident. Sandbags are available for those living in single-family homes and duplexes. The City Yard is located at 2500 Majona Avenue. With millions taking to the roads this Thanksgiving holiday, the Torrance Police Department is reminding drivers to buckle up every time you get in the car. According to the Governor's Highway Safety Association, the observed seat belt rate of backseat passengers is only 76 percent, despite 90 percent of front seat passengers buckling up nationwide. Officials say no matter where you're seated, everyone should fasten their seat belts when the car is moving. Here in California, the fine for a seat belt violation is $162 for adults and $490 for not having children children in the proper child safety seat. Under the state law, children under two who weigh under 40 pounds or under 40 inches must ride in a rear-facing seat. Children under the age of eight or under four feet nine inches tall must be seated in the appropriate car or booster seat. Now, as the busy holiday shopping season kicks off, officials say they see more people putting themselves in unsafe situations. Southern California automobile experts release tips today on how shoppers can be safer and more cautious. They say during the holiday season, there are increased hazards in parking lots and shoppers locking themselves out of cars, car collisions and theft. Jeffrey Spring, the Auto Club's corporate communications manager, says a moment of distraction or poor judgment by shoppers in a rush can lead to unfortunate situations. 20% of all collisions occur in parking lots and often lead to expensive insurance claims. Data shows that the two of the days with the highest number of auto claims is the day before Thanksgiving and the Friday before Christmas. Here are a few tips to help you be aware of hazards in the parking lot. Drive slowly and avoid shortcuts. When you park, stay focused. Make sure to place your keys or key fob in your purse. Never leave your items in the car and park in well-lit areas. A local business got into the Thanksgiving spirit early by fundraising for a very special four-pod friend. Dogtopia hosted its first Barksgiving Day on Monday to fundraise to help Tillman, also known as Tilly, get trained to support a veteran. Other four-pod friends joined in on the fun with a meet-and-greet with Tilly, pie-eating contest for dogs, Thanksgiving-themed pup treats and bake sale, pooch paramedics teaching CPR, and sock prints customizing socks with dog photos, all to support old, nine-week-old Tilly, who's a sponsored service dog paired with a veteran. He was named after fallen soldier and former NFL player Patrick Tillman and is in training with Next Step Service Jobs, an organization supported by the Dogtopia Foundation that helps veterans and first responders pair up with service dogs at no charge. After receipt of application, we uh, there's an interview process and then the training begins. After interview, if you're accepted, uh, you'll work uh, hands-on with many dogs until we find your partner. We take our time making sure that it's the right uh, partner for you. And then the veteran begins training with that dog also. So at the end of the process, they, all bec uh, they also become very dog savvy. And a lot of them go into some dog training themselves. Tillman was um, one of 10 puppies um, born uh, back east. And um, we were trying to get a good name. We didn't know what we were going to name this puppy. We wanted to keep it uh, like a patriotic theme because he was actually born close to 9-11, 9-13. Um, and we just couldn't come up with a name. We had our, our customers vote with the name and we kind of narrowed it down to a couple. The event helped get Dogtopia closer to their goal of raising $6,000 to support his training. All of the proceeds from the event will go towards its goal. I love it. I love it. It's perfect. When I got out, you know, I, d I didn't have much, and Next Step Service Dogs, they found me, 
and uh, they, they picked me up and helped me out and they were there every day. I think it's important just for the simple fact that there's not a lot of good ways for us to deal with the things that we had to do over there. Um, and we sit here a lot in the dark and wonder if it was right or wrong. Um, and I know when I received my service dog, Hank, he was the one person that that never looked at me any different, never asked me any questions, never wondered what I did over there and why I did it. He just looked at me, wagged his tail, and, and, and loved me ever since. Once certified, Tilly will be given to his veteran match. Fun fact, Tilly was picked up on the day of Patrick Tillman's birthday. Dogtopia South Bay recently opened in Torrance. They're located at 2360 West, 205th Street. If you stop and visit the Majona Marsh Preserve and Nature Center this season, you may see some special visitors. Recently, staff saw a Cooper Hawk and an American Kestrel hunting for insects and small birds on the preserve. There were also red-shouldered hawks and a red-tailed hawk in the area. These raptors are a sign that the preserve is a balanced and thriving ecosystem. Officials say they're considered indicator species and help them understand the balance of life. The marsh is thought to be one of the last remaining vernal freshwater marshes in Los Angeles County. You can stop by and visit Tuesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you want to enjoy a juicy, delicious burger cooked to your liking, you won't have to go far while you're shopping at Delamo. The mall just opened Burger M on the main level by Dick's Sporting Goods. The eatery gives customers an opportunity to create your own burger with options of three buns, six sauces, 11 patties, and nine unconventional toppings. They have everything from Wagyu beef and pineapple to veggie and a sunny side up egg. You can even choose mini burgers as an option. But if you prefer chicken, they also offer classics such as grilled and crispy chicken sandwiches. Burger M translates to many burgers in Hebrew. A survey by a personal finance website releases the best places to shop this week for Black Friday. With many retail retailers this year starting Black Friday sales earlier, for many it's a, still a big tradition to go shopping the day after Thanksgiving. Wallet Hub surveyed nearly 8,000 deals from 29 of the biggest U.S. retailers. 2019 Black Friday ad scan. Some of the retailers offering the best Black Friday discounts they found were JCPenney, Kohl's, Dick's Sporting Goods, Kmart, Macy's, and Nordstrom. They also broke down discounts for particular products. JCPenney and Sears had the best discounts for apparel and accessories. For computers and phones, they found JCPenney, Lenovo, HP, and Belk as the top discounts. And for books, movies, and music items, they say Walmart and Best Buy have the best deals. The average discount was weighted based on the pre-discounted price of the item in order to give more credit to the retailers discounting higher ticketed items. Amazon did not provide all the information for their Black Friday deals, and that's why some deals could not be included. If you're looking to give back this holiday season, you can do so by helping out Torrance Transit's toy drive. Torrance Transit's Stuff a Bus event is underway with City of Torrance police and fire departments participating. The hope is to collect as many unwrapped gifts, toys, canned goods, gift cards, and monetary donations. You can drop off donations at the locations you see on the screen until December 12th at 5 p.m. All gifts will be donated to the Torrance Family Crisis Center, Torrance Police and Fire Toy Drive, and the Torrance Delama Rotary Club. You can also stop by between 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday, December 13th at the Delamo Fashion Center, where there will be three collection stations. They'll have locations in front of Lazy Dog Cafe, Hometown Buffet, and the final locations inside the mall at the Information Booth and Food Court. If you're getting ready to shop for the holidays, well, you can start this Saturday with special discounts by small businesses in Torrance in honor of Small Business Week. Reporter Nicole Salvatierra spoke to few businesses participating and has the story. <laughs> Small Business Saturday received an upgrade in Torrance as the Chamber of Commerce is hosting Shop Local Small Business Week. Business owners like Mark Common of Paul's Photo are eager to roll out the savings to their customers and support the Torrance community. I want the people to come here because this is where I like to shop. I like to find my friends and neighbors in the community who own the stores. Paul's Photo has participated in Small Business Saturday for the last nine years to give back to their customers for their support. 
every day should be Small Business Saturday. You know, we should all support our local businesses, our local friends in the community every single day with our shopping. Small Business Week kicks off on November 30th and runs through December 7th, with nearly 30 Torrance businesses participating this year. Paul's Photo is offering store credit with select purchases and swag bags to gift to aspiring photographers. So this is all cool stuff that makes it easier to take a picture. If you need a meal or something sweet after holiday shopping, various local eateries throughout Torrance are offering deals as well during this time. Richard Meehan is visiting family for the holidays. His first stop is always Torrance Bakery in downtown Torrance. Meehan and his wife worked there 20 years ago and have watched this small business grow. You know, it's just, you know, good hometown bakery. I mean, good hometown values. Giving back to the community is important for businesses like Torrance Bakery that participate in charities across the South Bay. If we are successful, then we would love to get back to the community as well. So I think it's all about give and take with the community. And I think that uh, businesses, it's, it's imperative that they do give back to the community. Torrance Bakery has participated in Small Business Week since 2014. This occasion reminds shoppers that places like Torrance Bakery are worth checking out. By shopping at a small business, you keep our, our sense of community alive. And I think we make a pretty good product as well. So yeah, you can certainly go to say a big box store and pay a little bit less for your pumpkin pie or something like that. But we, we handcraft our items here and they're all by hand. They're not made by machine. Small Business Week is the time to catch a great deal while giving back to the local businesses in the city. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Nicole Salvatierra. Shop Small Business Week runs through December 7th. To find the full list of restaurants and retailers participating, go to torrancechamber.com. Let's get to the weather. Today it was cloudy with a high of 68 degrees and expect a low of 54. Then tomorrow you can expect showers with a high of 60 and a low of 51. Then on Thanksgiving, temperatures will continue to drop with a high of 55 and a low of 49 degrees. And the rain will continue through the end of the weekend. If you have romaine lettuce in your fridge, you'll want to check out where it's from. The U.S. Food and, and Drug Administration is investigating a multi-state outbreak of E. coli infections linked to romaine lettuce harvested from Salinas, California. It has already sickened 40 people in 16 states. The advisory urges customers to not eat and retailers to not sell any romaine lettuce that is from that area. You can find out the harvest location on the labeling of where they're grown. If it says Salinas anywhere, throw it away and if your salad isn't label, labeled at all, then also get rid of it. The alert includes all sorts of romaine lettuce, including whole heads of romaine, hearts of romaine, and pre-cut lettuce and salad mixes. On November 24th, 21st, excuse me, Misa Bay LLC recalled salad products due to possible E. coli contamination. And here are some upcoming events you won't want to miss. If you're looking for something fun to do on Thanksgiving morning, you can participate in the city's turkey trot this Thursday. Runners and walkers can sign up for late registration tomorrow at the Ken Miller Recreation Center or on event day from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30. This will take place at the Sam's Club parking lot. Then this Friday, you can enjoy the Rhodium Open Air Market Drive-In Movie Nights. They will feature Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Attendees can enjoy a great film along with food trucks and movie concessions. Gates open at 6.30 p.m. Admission is $20 per car. Then this Sunday, you can stop by the Southern California Live Steamers Mini Railroad at Wilson Park. Rides are by donation and will take place from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The mission is to educate and promote interest in railroad history by building and operating a miniature railroad facility. Well, in just two minutes, Dr. Swati Sicaria from the Torrance Memorial Hunt Cancer Center will join me to talk about the new facility that is bringing the state-of-the-art cancer care to the South Bay. Queen is just my everything. Right now, I wouldn't know where my life would be without her. They say chivalry's dead is not. Terrence is a gentleman. He opens doors. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. 
my landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. It takes me to a place of no hope. It takes me to a place of loneliness. It just, it saddens me. When you discriminate against somebody in housing, where do these people go? Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. I just found out my work party is a plus one. You want to go? This is my boss, Ella. Nice to meet you, Greg. <laughs> You're welcome. Nope, I'm high. But I'll clean the kitchen while you're gone. You're already making good decisions when you're high. Pool party at Jesse's. Can you drive? I'm toasted. Nope, I'm high. But I can order us a ride. Don't make an exception when it comes to driving. If you feel different, you drive different. Welcome back to the second half of Newsbreak Live. Joining me is Dr. Swati Sikaria from Torrance Memorial Hunt Cancer Center. She's an oncologist and hematologist. She is also the vice chair of the Torrance Memorial Oncology Committee. Welcome to Newsbreak Live. Thank you so much for being here. So the Torrance Memorial Medical Center will soon open its new Donald and Priscilla Hunt Cancer Center in early December. So tell me what this will offer to the South Bay region. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. We are thrilled to have the new Hunt Cancer Center and so thankful to all the donors in the community who have made this possible. This center is really going to be a one-stop shop for cancer treatment. The center will have cancer experts in every type of cancer, a full laboratory, 32 chemotherapy infusion bays, we have radiation oncology, genetic counseling, Everything that you would need for cancer care is all, you know, is under one roof. So you did mention some of the new resources that will be available at this brand new facility. So tell me a little bit more about how you feel it will offer stronger resources for cancer patients right here in Torrance and across the South Bay that they didn't have before. Great question. So um, to start with, the center is 38,000 square feet. So it's a spacious healing environment. A patient can come in, bring someone with them when they're coming for chemotherapy, have an inf info entertainment center that they can see. There will be a cancer resource center within the cancer center, so they can provide information regarding their diagnosis and treatment, and they don't have to go searching for it. Those social work support services will be there for them. And then on campus, there's, as I mentioned, all the other services like mammography, radiation oncology, everything will be nearby. In addition, we have tumor boards. That means that every week, the doctors spend about three hours together between medical oncologists, surgical oncologists, radiation, uh, radiation oncologists, radiologists, pathologists. We all get together as a group multiple times a week and we discuss new cases of patients who've been diagnosed with cancer or patients who have complicated cases and put all of our minds together to come up with the best treatment plan for them. That's a really unique thing to have, especially in a community setting. Um, so we're, we're very proud of that. Talk to me a little bit about the emotional care. I know there's going to be state-of-the-art technology, treatment, everything in one place. Mm -hmm. But what about the other types of services um, that cancer patients need when they're going through treatment? Great. So we have a palliative care specialist, um, Dr. Eve Makoff, and she will be embedded in our practice. So she will be one of the doctors just like the doctors who are dedicated to, to oncology. And palliative care is focusing on the supportive care elements of going through cancer treatment. So making sure that someone has that emotional support, making sure that their goals are being met. And maybe sometimes it's not getting chemotherapy, maybe it's focusing more on comfort and end of life care or palliative care. So that is um, a resource that every cancer patient in our center will have access to is palliative care. In addition, whenever necessary, we have access to social worker and cancer center resources. 
There are so many different types of cancers out there. So talk to me about the treatment and technology that will be offered at your facility. So, you know, among the seven doctors in the group, you know, there's a combined more than 100 years of experience treating cancer. So we've seen it all, you know, from a simple, straightforward breast cancer to a rare subtype of sarcoma. You know, there's nothing that we haven't come across before. And it's great working in a team setting because if one doctor hasn't seen something, you know that someone else will have. So, you know, we have expertise in every subtype of cancer. One of the services offered is genetic counseling. So mm -hmm. what is it? Can you explain a little bit to our viewers what that is? You know, when someone's diagnosed with cancer, they may be wondering, what does this mean for my family? Does that mean that my loved one is going to get this as well? So we can provide genetic testing on site. Um, and what that means is that we can draw the tests there and we don't ch test for just one gene, like the BRCA gene that people have heard about. We actually will test for a multitude of a variety of different cancer-causing genes. And if someone is found to have something, we provide a genetic counselor where someone will actually sit down with the patient and potentially with their family as well and go over what that means in terms of the impact for the patient and their family. When it comes to treatment, I'm just circling back, besides chemotherapy, there are other options that patients can get, right? Oh, absolutely. So at the Hunt Cancer Center, we have access to every cutting edge treatment, including not just chemotherapy, but targeted therapies, immunotherapy, um, which is when we use drugs to actually boost a patient's immune system to fight the cancer themselves. And so um, we also have clinical trials. And what that means is that we might be using experimental immune therapies or other experimental therapies to provide the latest cutting edge treatments um, and so it's not just, you know, what we think of as old school chemotherapy. And speaking of clinical trials, this takes me to my next <laughs> question. As an oncologist and a mm -hmm. doctor who has diverse experience and you conduct research focusing on cancer, what does it mean to have this type of facility now? Well, um, you know, it definitely allows us to expand our clinical trial program. And, um, you know, we have clinical trials at our center through our, um, through our own trials, through our Cedars-Sinai affiliation, and through some UCLA trials. And at the center, patients can be enrolled in any of these studies. They can have their labs drawn there. They can have their scans next door. So it's a comprehensive center in, in that sense of, of being involved in clinical trials. Tell me about Torrance Memorial Medical Center's affiliation with Cedar sinai mm -hmm. and how it will be used um, here at the new Hunt Cancer Center. For many people, they might not know what a strong affiliation now exists. That's a great question, too. So, um, so we joined, um, we are affiliated, I should say, with Cedar sinai And what that means is that when you're down here in the South Bay, you can have the best of both worlds. So you can stay in the community and have the best care local, but at the same time, if someone needs a surgery that cannot be done locally, we can have some of those expert surgeons come down to the South Bay and provide those surgeries here. In addition, for clinical trials, there are clinical trials that previously we did not have in the South Bay. And now we're able to bring those trials from Cedars down here so that patients can have everything they would have at an academic center and have it local. Your team can treat more than 60 types of cancer. So tell me about that. I know it also comes into play the affiliation as well and the diverse experts that are available to treat patients. Absolutely. If there's a case, especially a rare case or sometimes for a disease like acute lymphoblastic leukemia, there are situations where we want an added expert and we use that affiliation with Cedar sinai in that setting where a patient can go up there for a bone marrow transplant or for, you know, um, added input on their case. What can you tell our viewers about cancer research at the moment and what is yet to, ca yet to come? Excuse me. So many people have questions about cancer in general, um, but you're the expert, so if you can tell us kind of what's happening at the moment. Well, you know, every treatment that we have today at some point began in a clinical trial. At some point that was considered experimental and then was found to work and that is now standard of care. 
So I'll, I'll mention a couple things that we've done here in the South Bay. Um, so one, for example, for, for breast cancer. You know, currently for women who have stage four breast cancer that's advanced, there's a drug that works really well for those patients. It's called ribocyclob. No uh, affiliation with the company. Anyway, um, what we're doing is we are actually off, we have a clinical trial where patients are receiving the medication after surgery to help prevent a recurrence of that cancer. So this trial will help us potentially, you know, shift to the paradigm from treatment to prevention. Another example is liquid biopsies. So a liquid biopsy is where, hopefully in the future, we won't need to have scans to detect cancer. We might be able to just take a blood sample. And Torrance Memorial has been a pioneer in clinical trials with liquid biopsies. You know, we've, we've been the lead enroller in the country on a number of clinical trials trying to develop liquid biopsies. And so I think that's really exciting for our patients to know that they've participated in things like that and that they're helping, you know, push cancer care forward for themselves and for others. The opening day we haven't mentioned is December 16th for the Cancer Center, so it's not open just yet. And we did show some video of behind the scenes of what the beautiful facility looks like. But if people want to get information on how to receive cancer care at this Donald and Priscilla Hunt Cancer Center, how can they go about doing that? So, you know, the easiest way is usually to get a referral through, you know, your primary care physician or through any doctor, but patients can also call the center directly, um, and maybe we can put up the information for the cancer center. But um, feel free to call, and as you said, December 16th, that's our start date. Dr. Sakaria, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you'd like to add about this new chapter that you'll soon be starting? at the new facility? You know, I, I think all of us are just really grateful. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, um, you know, I, I really can't even explain how grateful we are to um, Donald and Priscilla Hunt, number one, for their donation that's made this possible, but also for all the volunteers in the community, everyone who has put in time to make this center their own and to be able to provide such amazing care in our community. Dr. Sakaria, thank you so much for your time and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. And if you want more information, you can go to torrencememorial.org. We have the information on your screen. Also, the address is 3285 Sky Park Drive. And if you have any questions, you can call the physician's office at 310-750-3300. Well, that does it for Newsbreak Live. If you ever have news or video that you'd like to share, please email us at newsbreak at torrentca.gov. Also, if you missed any portion of the show, you can catch it all on Torrent City Cable's YouTube page, Torrance Council has the night off. Have a great night.